Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Paint Tankul and Bone Ripper. No, the name, it's, it's a funny name. I mean, like, why is it Tankul and Bone Ripper when it should be Bone Ripper and Tankul? I get Tankul's strong and powerful, but Bone Ripper's this big, Tankul's this big. Anyway, I'm getting out of track. I've finally gotten around to painting this beast of a model, but I want you guys to be part of this as well. What I'm doing is I'm going to break down each part of the model into separate painting videos. The first video, which is this one, is going to be me just painting the fur. The second video will be the skin, the third video will most likely be the armoured parts, and I will continue this on until the model is fully painted and fully based. Now there's three reasons why I'm doing this painting series like this. The first one is to stop me from starting a project without finishing it. Sometimes when I start a painting video, there can be a few days break between painting sessions. And when I get to come back to it, I just start to lose interest in finishing it. And sometimes I can't match it up to the previous recording session just as well. So recording it this way in different sections, it gives me a chance to break it up a bit. The second part is for me to be a better content creator. Recording a painting project this way means I'm going to be making more videos. When I'm in college, I don't get much time to make content. So I need to get back into the swing of things. Not only just making a video, making any old video, but making the best content that I can. The third reason and the best reason is, I want to talk about your feedback during the videos. I want you guys to leave feedback in the comment section about parts you like, parts you dislike. Maybe talk about some different colour schemes I should try or just ask any questions in general you'd like me to talk about. I want you guys to be involved in these painting projects as much as possible. The more your feedback you give to me, the more I know how much you like it or what maybe different ways. Try from a different camera angle, maybe the lighting isn't good. Um, if you want to talk about lower fluff, 40k even, I want to discuss more of this stuff and answer your questions during the painting videos. So hopefully this is all going to work out. But the most important thing is I want this project to be very open from input from you guys. So let's start the first video with painting the fur. Alright so I basically I'm pretty much just going to be following the tutorial that they gave on Warhammer TV. Uh, and what they do is they start off with the fur before going on to the skin and that's what I'm kind of going to be focusing on in this first video. I want to get this fur and the well. I should be able to get all the skin done for this. So um, what I'm going to start off with is Morn Fang Brown. Which to my surprise, to, like right now I only realised that that's a base colour. I always thought Morn Fang Brown was kind of a layer colour. Because when I was basing everything like brown, I want, wanted a brown colour. I was using this as like... The layer one on top of the darker one, which was if I can see it there. I literally had it in my hand. Oh, Rhinox, Rhinox High, that's what it was. So, so now that I know that this one's kind of strong enough to be a base, I'm gonna start using it. So, I don't mind being a little bit messy here. I'm gonna get all this fur covered. Now, the only parts I've kind of left off this model are some of the wires coming around the back because just to make it like much easier to to paint uh, this side of them so I'll just kind of I'll paint them separately off it paint around this little hole where Tankwell's foot reaches let me see just some just make sure I cover this area there's nothing worse coming back to kind of a finished based part of a model and you realize you have to leaving a whole chunk of it. So it's kind of nice being able to be, it's kind of nice being able to get messy when you're doing the base coats. As bad as the base coats look, uh, before you start like washing and, or shading as it is now, before you start doing that part. And you see there's a lot of fur into this part, right in underneath the kind of, the, back part here which would have been a lot harder to get if I had all these kind of pipes coming over and everything so hoping hopefully you can kind of get you the gists of kind of your basic colors from this video which is like that's what I like doing I like watching paint tutorials 
you know to get some ideas especially how to use colors i really like using the paint splatter book uh paint splatter kind of sections in white dwarf i know a lot of people don't like them but you know just for kind of figuring out your best colors and what kind of tones to start off with that's what i like doing i think i'm after making this it's a little bit too watery and well, I, just, I don't want to thicken it up too much i just want to add like a little tiny little bit more because it's almost gone transparent on it now that's a lot better cover up all this fur and the brush I'm using what is it a base coat brush which is really old okay so a little bit of an interruption there the memory card on my camera said it was full so I don't think uh, I think I spotted it quick enough I didn't exactly miss anything so what I was talking about before I cut out was that the brush I'm using is pretty old uh, the bristles are kind of bent out of shape it's a it's a base coat brush and all GW one it's like it's one of those old ones where it's like color coded what are the new ones oh, no, the new ones aren't color coded on the top but this one was and um, so I use it as a base like a big base brush it used to be like a bit smaller for, or used to be for smaller base brushing or base coating but for now it just has to do for kind of the down and dirty stuff because the bristles are the bristles have seen better days let's just put it that way I'm just gonna let this dry for a few minutes I have a fan here I'm gonna let it dry with the fan and then I'll decide if I need to put another layer or another kind of tin coat on it um, which is always a good thing the more tin layers you put on well not the more but kind of two to three tin layers will usually do you yeah it's starting to dry on the top there so I think I'll give it another going over once it's dry and just a little bit of fur here just a little tiny bit sticking out and I think that's everywhere I've covered yeah I'm spotting little grey patches coming up already from parts I missed but I think I've got, kind of got all the areas where the fur is there's none on the tail there's none on the other side of the arms. There's definitely none on the front that I can see. Uh, well, the front body anyway. There's some on the leg. His other leg is mechanical. And that's not going to have any fur. So uh, I'm going to stick this next to the fan here for two minutes. And I'm just going to let it dry. You can see some of the kind of patches coming up anyway. So I will see you guys in a second. So he's all dried up. And you can probably see it's like it really was like thin layer I put on him the first time. You can see the kind of the grey still coming up. I used a grey primer, just I forgot to mention. Uh, I used the Halfords primer grey. Uh, it's really good, really kind of cheap for the size of the can you can get it for. Um, but I definitely have to add another tin layer onto the fur. Uh, especially the top part because that was a kind of a heavily watered down mixture, so it's really thin. Uh, the bottom one kind of here, not as much, it's a bit more stronger. So I'll kind of maybe water it down again. Uh, just for the leg parts so I'm gonna go over that right now as soon as I zoom out here so let me see let me get my one fang brown let me get my little pen and try on the camera here oh, just a tiny bit of water give it a good mix so let me see let's start to make sure I'm in frame get it all along up here so I don't have to kind of spread it as much around the skin as long as I get all the prominent parts of the fur and usually for fur on Skaven I usually go for like a grey I think like 90% of the need Skaven model I have so off the top of my head just thinking I think a lot of them are grey or maybe it's just the last few I've done I've kind of gone the grey kind of colour so it's kind of refreshing to give them a bit of a a different color let's say like a, a younger kind of color brown instead of gray well unless you're painting a gray here then then break all the grays out all there's covered I got there all long hair is pretty much covered the legs uh, I'll give the legs another look over once that's dry just to make sure I've covered everything as far as I can see 
Oh no, I did miss somewhere. Very tiny, tiny piece here. To kind of the back of his neck. I know it's really small. Let's see if I can get a close look. Yeah, just the back of the neck there. It's really easily hard to miss. Especially since I have the virus knob with the helmet on. I can't remember why I chose that version with the helmet. It definitely gave it a little bit more of a watered. Uh, kind of going over here because it's very hard to get these parts. So it's kind of like the water. Let the kind of water down brown kind of sink in and then just give it another tin layer. There's very little there, so it's not too bad. So I'm going to let him dry. Let me stick him next to the fan. Leave him over there, and while he's drying, I'm gonna sort out uh, what color I'm going to do next. Now this is now, as I said, I'm using the the Games Workshop kind of paint along color. So what I had next was a dry brush of Tyrant Skull. Now I don't have Tyrant Skull. The only kind of ones closest I'd have is Ushapti Bone, Zandri Dust, and I'm pretty sure I should have another one. Here somewhere. It's a very similar colour. Flared one flesh even, yeah that's pretty light. So I'm not too sure what's this one here. Kids left flesh. Oh, won't be using that. So um I'm gonna look up and see which kind of colours, which one of these kind of closely match him. And then I wanna come back, I'm gonna dry brush this on, and then we'll go to the last stage of the fur before we move on to the skin. So now that he's good and dry, I've decided on going with Ushapti Bone. Uh, turns out Tyrant Skull is a uh, a dry brush um, paint, so I kind of think of no wonder I don't have it. I haven't really bought any of those dry brush paints. So I went to Ushapti Bone. Uh, Zandri Dust was a bit too dark, Flayed One Flesh would have been a bit too light, so hopefully this one is bright. I'm just trying to get the right consistency on my hand here to dry brush it on. So, you know, if you've, like as you know, if you've dry brushed before, if you've never done it, um, it's important to try and get as, as less on the brush as you can. And then just lightly. And I mean, very lightly, because I'm going too hard here and I'm like, oh my god. Just very lightly. Kind of brush it across the tips of the fur just to catch the the kind of the parts sticking out because if you go too hard or too deep you'll kind of get this like chalky looking effect but I think that will get like kind of sorted out once I get to the last edge of the fur which I'll be putting like a like a wash over it or a shade <laughs> Let's see, I think I need to get a little bit more on my brush. Because the way I usually did it was, you know, you put your base color on, you do your wash, and then you do your highlight, and now you're dry brushing. But when I was watching the video from Warhammer TV on this, Duncan said that this will kind of blend it a lot better. So maybe it's not too bad if you get a lot of it kind of on the bigger parts of the fur. Because once the, the shade goes into it, hopefully it will, you know, tie it all together. And this isn't all dry brushes, I need to get like a couple of brushes sorted out for dry brushing. Because the bristles in this are gone pretty, pretty hard. Yeah, I got a bit too much on this part. So I need to kind of lighten it up a bit. So it kind of looks like he has frosted tips a little bit. <laughs> so again, my camera came up as memory card full. So hopefully I've deleted any of the other stuff that I don't need on it anymore. So the only thing I kind of missed anyway was just the dry brush in here along this part of the leg. Which I think in some parts I might have went a little bit too heavy. But hopefully uh, the wash will sort all that out. So I need to over here a little bit it's 
kind of a hard thing to judge sometimes dry brushing sometimes it looks really good sometimes it looks like it looks dry brushed you kind of get that chalky kind of look which I'm kind of getting right now so I think I need to kind of it's kind of something I need to kind of go over a bit more actually let me get this part in here let's get a little tiny bit of the pot here I'm gonna need a new pot of this as well this is like nearly all finished on me let's get a tiny little bit just to kind of wet the tip just the tip just barely any on that so hopefully it's just enough to kind of get these smaller bits done in here yeah, definitely. Just a little piece down here. So the only part that's left and it's definitely dry by now is the fur that I missed at the start behind the neck. And I think that's it for the fur highlights or the fur dry brush. I think it's kind of looking good. It's not looking too bad. Might look a little bit heavy now, but I think once I put the wash of Agrax or shed over it should kind of dampen it down a bit and hopefully tie it all together. So I'm going to give that a couple of minutes to dry. That, sh that should like literally be drying in like two minutes. And what I'll do is, better leave them down that way. I'll clean this dry brush first. What I need to do is find my Agrax or shed, which I, do I have a brand new part of it? So I think I do have to open up the new one. So I'm gonna give that another few minutes to dry and then I'll come back and I'll put the Agrax or shed on the fur. So now that let's let's call him his highlights, his his hair highlights, his ice tips are all dry. What I'm going to do now is put a shade of Agrax or shed in and what I want to do here is I want to try and use as less shade as I can as possible because one of the things I've done over the years is kind of go to town when I, once I'm putting shade in so I'm really wanting to kind of go for the kind of put a little bit on it and spread it around as best I can I'm going to put a little bit more than that on instead of just like slapping it on let it go through all the crevices and then once it's all dry and I look at it and I'm like why is it so blotchy, why is it so dark so what I'm going to try and do is spread it around kind of as carefully as I can as well I suppose maybe it's like the wrong part to be like saying as carefully because this is like the first part of the model we're painting and you're kind of, you kind of have like permission here to go to town on it because it's all going to be tidied up once the skin comes on but I really want to try this whole less is more effect with washes. Maybe it's kind of one of these things that that's the way the washes, uh, washes and shades have always been used. And it's just me that's just been the kind of like slapping it on and kind of not really thinking about it too much. The only time I've kind of, the only time I really think I've concentrated when putting shade or washes on is when I'm painting like ultramarines or space marines. Because you just kind of like put like a line and some of the crevices you don't want to put it all over so I'm just going to try and like put one bit on the brush and focus it around, spread it around as best I can and plus like this this way of putting a, a wash over kind of like a highlighted part that's a little bit new so hopefully it'll turn out uh, nice Hopefully it'll come out right, nice looking. Now there's a lot of fur down here. So I might build it up in this little pocket here and spread it across. I'm trying not to put my fingers in any of the parts before I after putting the shade in. Oh, let me see, they get all this part. I right, see, look. Now maybe you guys can't see it. Maybe if I can focus it on that little part. But right here I've missed some fur. So what I'm going to have to do is come back and make sure I do put the brown on that. 
Just like, you'll always miss a little piece. But at least I've caught it now. I probably would have caught it when I'm doing the skin. But at least I caught it now. Just on the back of the leg right here. Ooh. But at least I've seen it. So it's kind of not looking too bad. Oh, his neck. The back of his neck. That's where I need to go. And that's going to be the last part. There's very little fur hair, actually. There's more... I was going to say there's more neck. There's more skin than fur hair. It's just a little bit kind of... Sticking out from the helmet. And I think that's all of it. I'm going to give that another minute to dry. And I'm going to have a look at it once it's all dry. And see if it's kind of worked or not. So I'll see you guys in a second. So, he's all good and dry. And I think the fur is looking pretty decent. It's not looking too bad. But I think kind of this technique of putting a shade over the kind of the highlight or the dry brush, it really puts it together. But I guess it'll obviously look a little bit more better placed kind of uh, once the skin has gone in. Um, like there's a few little patches like like or particularly around this leg where it's a bit I might have dry brushed a little bit too hard, but like I I. I haven't dry brushed anything in a long time. It's just a matter. It's just a matter of getting used to it or practicing dry brushing a little bit better. But other than that, the dry brush parts turned out pretty decent. It's not going to focus on his head, so I'll go back to the fur here. So he's looking pretty good, and hopefully this first video was enjoyable. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much. Hopefully you might have got something from it. But the second video for definite is going to be a lot longer. It's going to be a lot more detailed. Because there's a lot of skin on this guy. Uh, it's kind of broken down to about four, five, six steps. Including all these little stitches, uh, scars, markings and stuff like that. So that's going to be the next video I'm going to be focusing on is is the skin so hopefully you guys like this video and if you have make sure to hit the like button leave a comment and most importantly subscribe if you haven't already so i will see you guys in the next video